What gives life value? And when does life begin? The answer to those two questions will frame your viewpoint for this entire debate. I've been on both sides. I've been in the abortion clinic as a patient, and I've spoken at a pro-life rally across the street from one. What changed? I saw with new eyes what gives life value and when life begins. I was a senior in high school, and I remember sitting in this waiting room. And sitting right across from me was my boyfriend, next to me my best friend. Two of the closest people in my life, yet I felt alone and scared. When my boyfriend found out I was pregnant, he said, you don't want to keep it, do you? And my best friend said, you cannot keep this baby. And I was known as the good one in my family, so I thought ending the life of my unborn child was the only option that I had. I laid on the table as the nurse gave me a sonogram, and for some reason, I wanted to see the screen that was conveniently facing away from me. She was hesitant, but she allowed me to see. And she must have seen my eyes lighten up because as if it was scripted, she said, see, it's nothing. It's just the size of a pea. Those carefully guided words in that moment gave my heart false comfort. Because what she communicated to me was, you're not killing a baby. What she's saying is, no, you, can, you can do this. And so I decided I was going to have this abortion. I was seven weeks into my pregnancy. What the nurse didn't tell me was that my baby's sex, eye color, skin tone, height, and blueprint for who they were created to be had already been determined at conception. She didn't tell me that my baby's heartbeat had already begun to beat. She told me my baby was nothing. I was given the RU486 pill, abortion pill, and the purpose of this pill is to block the hormone progesterone so that the baby would no longer receive nourishment or blood flow from me. This would also cause the baby to detach from my uterus and die. Next, I was instructed after 24 to 48 hours to take a second set of pills in the comfort of my home. These pills would force out the dead baby that I've been carrying around in my body for two days. My pills didn't work. I thought they did because I bled a little bit, but two months later, I was in school and I started getting the most excruciating pains I've ever felt in my life. Going to the bathroom, blood clots the size of my fist, consistently leaving my body. I got sent home from school, lied to my mom, just told her I had back cramps. I sat on the toilet, what seemed like for hours, bleeding in excruciating pain, waiting to flush my dead baby down the toilet. The last thing I remember is laying in fetal position in my bed, praying and hoping all of this would be over soon. I forgot to mention my boyfriend actually broke up with me the day after we went to that abortion clinic together. This completely cut off all communication, so I pretty much went, by the, went through this by myself. And it took years before I came to acknowledge the pain and the regret of making a decision I wish I could take back. But as I began to share my story, I found out I wasn't alone. Countless women have told me me sharing my story has helped them give voice to their own pain and regret after ending the lives of their own babies. As an African American woman, I am deeply saddened and horrified by what abortion has done and continues to do to my community. The number one killer in the African American community is not black on black crime, not police brutality, not guns, not drugs, not heart disease or cancer. It is the direct and intentional killing of a human life inside the African-American woman's womb, abortion. Margaret Sanger, who is the founder of Planned Parenthood, had very close ties with the American Eugenics Society, and their whole goal was ethnic cleansing to wipe out Negroes like me. But I am proud to be a pro-life black African-American woman who is no longer uneducated about the lies of abortion. And I dedicated my life to defending the most innocent among us and letting women know the truth about abortion. And here's what the challenge I will leave with all of you from pro-life author Randy Alcorn. If abortion really does kill children and harms women, then there's too much at stake to stand on the fringes and do nothing. Thank you.